I don't have a need to hold the microphone. I just prefer holding it, having something I can talk into, you know? Not the Canada dry in the shot. Think about your favorite album. Why does it speak to you? Why is it your favorite? What about it makes it stand out among the others and makes you say, yeah, that's my favorite. A lot of people may elaborate and go on stories about why theirs is their favorite. This, who wrote the script? Today, I'm going to talk about an album from an artist that I just happened to find out about at the right place, at the right time. Um, today, God, who wrote the script? Today, I'm going to be talking about First, a history lesson, or as I like to call it, the part where I read from the book, or as I like to call it, the part where I, or as I like to call it, the part where I read. First, let's do a history lesson, or as I like to call it, the part where I read from a Wikipedia article. Neuro's Day at Disneyland was an American experimental breakcore music project created by Lauren Bowsfield in Oakland, California. Her first album, Attention Shoppers, was released in 2005, followed by From Rotting Fantasy. Why is it whenever I'm recording I don't know how to speak? Followed by From Rotting Fantasy Lands in 2009. Though the project was canceled in 2011, Bowsfield continued to make music independently. My sister's in the other room making a ruckus. Also, according to the Neuro's Day at Disneyland subreddit, she also used to work with a Sean Copperweiss, who played the drums. Um, there's not much information about him, but I feel that's somewhat important. Something of note is that while her music may not be for everyone, the people that are into it are really into it. Um, myself included. <laughs> Enough yapping. Let's look into the songs off her album to get a vibe for the musician that she is and why she might possibly make people feel this strongly about her. Now, a lot of people might consider this music as nothing more than something edgy for edgy young kids. And that's true. But, <laughs> at least whenever I found the music, I was in a sort of rough spot in my life. And it was something that like, finally put a sound to the emotions that I was feeling. And it also just, you know, scratched my little neurodivergent 
brain itch, you know? You know? She's gonna have to pay for that promo. Um, so... I forgot we were talking about a specific album. Okay, so the album Attention Shoppers in particular is one of the first albums that I found myself going, like, listening front to back over and over and over and over again and never getting tired of it. What's Nero's Day at Disneyland. Yes. Like, even to this day, it's my most played album, I think. It's even been my, like, Google profile picture since, like, 2016. <laughs> um, this album was a little more than an obsession to me. Um, some might call it, uh, I made it my whole personality, which is true. Like I said, whenever I found this album is when I needed it the most. I had like barely any friends. <laughs> Man, this script. I did not need to write that much in the script. Long story short. I basically already said this. Let's move to the next point. So the way that I found this artist <laughs> is because I found, I watched a video by the YouTuber Solar Sands who, you know, shout out to him. I like the new uh, video essays that he's been doing. So it was a video about Lauren Bousfield, because I think this is right after she had, um, she was in like a house fire. So I think she, he was putting like all her donation links and like where to support her, which you should. So in that video, he mentioned that she used to go under Neuro's Day at Disneyland. And then I was like, hmm, that album looks interesting. So I listened to it and then let me tell you, I listened to it and it was like the scene from Ratatouille where the guy's like, he has a flashback, except I didn't have a flashback to anything. I, it just made me feel like that scene. So the song was like nothing I'd ever heard before in my life. And then I was like, I need more. <laughs> like, oh my God, I need more. Where, oh God, where are we gonna get more? <laughs> and so just the more I researched about her and even to this day, the more I like, the more projects I listen by her, the more I realized like, I notice how she's been like honing in her craft. She's been like working on it. Sometimes I listen to some of her songs and I'm like, she was like doing the scene in Toy Story where he like does the restoration to Woody, but she was in the studio creating that. That's what she was, she was making. She was forming it. She's formulating. <laughs> she was formulating the song. So without further ado, let's dissect why her music works so well and why I love this album in particular. I keep on forgetting this is supposed to be about the specific album. If you were to put her music in a specific box, which is really hard to do, um, you would say technically it's a breakcore. It does use a lot of the, you know, I forgot what it's called, the beats for breakcore, you know, Powerpuff Girls intro, Amen Break. Guys, look! Oh. <gasps> it's pretty! Let's catch it! And it has a lot of higher BPMs, which is probably why it scratches that little that little brain itch for me. If you look at her newer works, there's a lot more than that. Um, there's a lot of ambience that goes into the soundscape. And I've always felt like breakcore is not a good enough descriptor of the type of music that she makes, especially like some songs you could be like, this is breakcore, but then there's other stuff where you're like, is this really? Like play me wrapped around the pole or theme for a chase scene architecture and tell me that's breakcore. Cause it's not. We need to like come up with like a name for this genre. Cause I want more of it. It's so interesting. One thing that I love about all her songs, especially the longer ones is that she builds upon musical ideas throughout the song. Like a big example is my favorite one. Uh, Sable Leathery Wings. I keep on forgetting the title of it, but it's a really good song. And the song is like, the song is like six minutes long. I exaggerated, it's five minutes, 42 seconds, but it's like six minutes long. As someone who happens to be a deficit of attention, it keeps my attention the entire time because there's so many things that are going on, the way it builds on, like it takes you on a musical journey. I love when music takes you on a musical journey. Top 10 things I like that music does is take you on a musical journey. And that's what that song does. I think I'm gonna make a video about that song in particular, like dissecting it. Like, you know, call that song like a frog in freshman year biology because I am dissecting it. Anyways, what I love about this album in particular is that while it is loud and abrasive, it also includes elements that you'd hear at a carnival, you know, the waltz time signature that's like, you know, used in carnivals. <laughs> it like, auditorial, auditorially, it gives you the vibe of like going to 
a theme park, but like something's off, you know? Like local carnival that's been going on for like 60 years. Everything is like rusted. The people that work there are like, don't wanna be there. <laughs> the rides are like, you, like the, the, hold on. <laughs> the whole thing hasn't been inspected in like 10 years. You walk in there and there's like a lawsuit. You can just feel it. Like it comes over you, just the lawsuit energy that happens, <laughs> that happens when you occur, when, what? The carousel is like, you can hear it whining out of years of use, you know, rain, all other di different types of, girl, where am I going with this? Or it could be your urban exploring and you come across this weird, like, carnival it gives you weird vibes think of like nara dreamland nara dreamland pinterest <laughs> that's how that album in particular feels to me there's a lot of themes on that album lost in bonerland it's been theorized that it's about you know gender dysphoria brand x is about being like dumb consumers maybe i'm looking way too into this maybe they're just dumb songs but if you think about it brand x ties into the title attention shoppers the like mickey mouse gas mask that you see on there um you know disney consumerism it's like something cute and innocent like disney but it's a gas mask oh my god i had a whole era where i was obsessed with it i was like did you know that in world war ii they had gas masks that were mickey mouse shaped so the little kids could, no, this wasn't World War II, this was the Cold War. So that little kids could not be scared of the gas mask. This is so, and they're so rare because there wasn't many of them made. So the fact that she found that like picture and used it for the album and like the titles like Attention Shoppers, like Nero's Day at Disneyland, like it ties into the name. Um, oh my God, her mind. <laughs> um, you know what I realized? This album kind of gives me the same vibes. It's like the same type of themes as FNAF, and that might be why I'm so into it. Top 10 embarrassing moments number one. <laughs> Anyways, conclusion. Is there a conclusion to this video? Am I even gonna post this? Her music speaks to me in a way that a lot of other music hasn't or hasn't been able to. And like to this day, I can listen to pretty much like any of her songs and not ever get tired of it there's so many things that go on in like the music composition i love i love when music has so many different interesting things that occur to where you can listen to it hours and hours on end and still find something new within it like that's music making that's that's creating okay that's crafting something anyways she takes a special place in my heart as literally my favorite Aww. musician of all time like not like by a landslide <laughs> um, so that's why it's crazy whenever people like ask me like who's your favorite artist i have to explain Yeah, I've created my personality around her music, specifically that album in particular. Did I, did I elaborate long enough? Am I making any type of sense? <laughs> yeah, I have, I have a lot of passion for a little underground, you, I'm not gonna make myself say that. Bro, why did I, why did I write my script like this? Y'all was gonna make me do the whole video and not tell me that my, my jewelry was lopsided? Okay, I see how y'all are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Y'all are all fake. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's the video, bye.